What I'm going to do in this video is give as much information as I can about the distance sensor. Uh, so hopefully someone out there with many more electronic smarts than me can tell me what's going on in here, what possible replacement parts might be uh, usable in here. So hopefully we can uh, come up with a way of possibly fixing these things uh, ourselves. Uh, a little bit of background before we start. The sensor itself is part of the harness that goes to the speed sensor also. This part of it, it gets a five volt input. That uh, common five volts goes to all of them. There's a common ground that comes back as well as an individual uh, response wire from each of the sensors. I've numbered these here, one through four, uh, because that's what they are uh, numbered when you look at PWIS. Uh, they detect where a magnet is relative to the, the sensor. Uh, when you look at PWIS, it gives a central position of zero and either a plus or minus, which is what that plus or minus is. Uh, when you move that, uh, and it's in millimetres, and I think up to about 12.7 millimetres, anything beyond that, it says, uh, is uh, out of limits. And I'm assuming that all of that is set up when you do a calibration of the system. Because there's going to be different responses from each of these, because when you look at the way this is installed, depending on the, exactly where the uh, shift rod is and where that magnet that senses it is, some of these are quite close, some of them are a bit further away. For distance sensor 4, it runs along this side, whereas distance sensors 1, 2 and 3 run along this side here. So I'm assuming what it does, because when it does a calibration, it is uh, going to put it into the central position and then move it either way as it selects the gears to see what response it actually gets from it. Puts a, a tolerance on that, I guess, and then it's looking for that to tell it what position that, that shift fork is in. So the setup I've got here, just three AA batteries, which is giving me four and a half volts. That's input to the five volt uh, and ground of the, the sensor. The third wire that I've got selected here is the, uh, the signal from sensor four, which is the yellow wire coming from uh, the harness here. Just removed one of the shift rods here, just to see what the response is from the centralized position. It's about two and a half volts is what I'd expect. If I move it about a centimetre in the negative direction, I get an increase in voltage, and about a centimetre in the other direction, I have a decrease in voltage. Negative and positive are the distances that PWIS gives me, so it'll give a zero at the centralised position, and it'll give me a distance in millimetres, either negative or positive, based on the position of this, and it seems as though a negative equates to a, an increase in voltage, uh, and the positive is a, a decrease in voltage. Interestingly, you can see that the response with no magnet uh, nearby is a high voltage, which I, from what I understand of all sensors is gonna be the reverse. I would expect a, a uh, very small output from a whole sensor if, it was, if there was no magnet close, and I would expect an increase in voltage as it gets closer to it. To make life a little bit easier, rather than move the shift rod around, I've just got a N52 neodymium magnet, which I've been using. It seems to be quite similar in its response. So from that central position there, and I'll, it doesn't seem to be uh, sensitive to the uh, polarity of the magnet. So that's the correct polarity there. That's gonna give me an increase in voltage, a decrease in voltage, pretty similar to the other one. If I reverse that, I pretty much get the same response. And what I'm trying to do here is hold that at about the distance where the, the shift rod magnet is from the sensor. They vary quite a bit, surprisingly enough. Some are within a millimeter or two, some are probably about five or six millimeters away. Uh, of interest with the, the sensor itself, because the magnet runs on this side of sensor four, but it runs on this side of sensors three, you only get the correct response when you put the magnets on the appropriate side. It won't work if you put it on the other side. So this is the initial indications you get from PWIS with the, uh, the car in uh, park. And as you can see, shift, uh, shift fork three or distance sensor three is showing that it's selected first. So that's what it does in park, interestingly enough. 
Uh, if I was to select third, that number there should become negative, and obviously if it's in a central position, it should be close to zero. Shift fork four or distance sensor four, that is for second and reverse. Uh, so we'll have a look at the indications of each of those. Uh, I'm not going to be able to see indications for these because I'm not going to be able to select anything beyond second. The first thing I'll do is select reverse. You can see shift for four, a distance sensor four. It's gone to a negative value to select reverse and it's gone out of first with distance sensor three. If I set, now select neutral, they should all go to a neutral position. They do. If I now select drive, it should select first and second because first is going to be selected for takeoff and then two, uh, second would be pre selected. There we go. So it looks like a movement of about seven and a half millimeters or so um, to put it in here. So, what I'm going to do now is disconnect the, uh, the sensor that's connected at the back of the transmission. I'm going to plug in this one and we'll see what response we get. These are the responses from the sensor with no magnets present at all. Um, all seems a bit strange. That the uh, distance sensor 3 shows a positive uh, distance, whereas all of the others are negative, even though the response is exactly the same from each. So looking at distance sensor 1, and this is just using my uh, magnet, which gives a very similar response to the, the magnet on the shift fork. So there's a centralised position for distance sensor 1. But now there's it positively. And negative. And now if I go to distance sensor 3 and I put the magnet on it in the central position, that response, and if I move it into a positive position, or negative position. So the response seems to be exactly the same, but for some reason, when there's no magnet there at all, um, it is giving that response for distance sensor three. And if I disconnect the sensor so I get a zero voltage return, this is what happens. Okay, so a zero voltage return um, so I still get that relationship with distance sensor 3. And interestingly, at the moment, I've got the sensor disconnected and I've only ever heard of uh, these faults here, 173, 1234, for the, the distance sensor having errors. Don't worry about the two at the top, that's just for the speed sensor. But interestingly, I get these others, 173, 5, 6, 7 and 8, which are another fault. And I've never heard those mentioned before for distance sensor problems.